嘛。The northeastern part of India is truly a land of diverse culture and ethnicity. Ranging from distinct tribes to tradition and heritage, this part of the country is home to some of the world's most diverse communities. One such community is Garo, a Tibeto Burman tribe. A majority of this ethnic group resides in Meghalaya, whereas sparse populations reside in neighboring states such as Nagaland, Assam and Tripura. Tripura is a state in northeast India, bordered on three sides by Bangladesh and home to a diverse mix of tribal cultures and religious groups. In the capital Agartala, the imposing Ujjanta Palace is set among Mughal gardens is an important landmark. Tripura Sundari Temple is situated in the ancient Udaipur about 55 kilometers from Agartala, believed to be one of the holiest Hindu shrines in this part of the country. South of the city, Nir Mahal Summer Palace sits in the middle of the Lake Rudrasagar and blends amazing architectural styles. As per census report of 2011, population of Garo in Tripura is 12,952. At present, as per survey conducted by Tripura Garo Union, population of Garo in Tripura as on 2016 is 16,086 numbers. Number of families 2,681, males 8,227 numbers and female 8,059 numbers. The major concentrations are at Udaipur subdivision and Ambasa subdivision of Tripura. There are various interpretations as to where the word Garu was derived from. Theoretical evidences state that the word might have been derived from a chief named Garu Mandal, a Tibetan place called Garu Pradesh and a specific tribe named Garu Ganching. Theories also state that the name might possibly have been derived from a native bird named Garura. The Garus refer to themselves as Achek Mande, meaning hill people. This particular tribe has been known in history for their vicious nature. British and Mughal invaders saw how such people fought against invasions. It is believed that this group first migrated from Tibet during 400 BC and settled down at what is now recognized as the Garo Hills.
population scattered as time progressed and many Garus took shelter at the neighboring parts. Although major part of the population of the Garos is converted into Christianity, still a significant population of them living in Tripura are still following their traditional religion. They worship nature, harvest, fields and deities who provide them with livelihood essentials from nature. The converted Garus celebrate Christmas and New Year with great enthusiasm. The houses get illuminated with lights and festive decorations during Christmas season. The churches become the hub of social events and worship. The traditional festivals pertaining towards nature are celebrated with massive social participation of the Garus following the indigenous beliefs. Garu festivals are linked closely with their agricultural lifestyle. They worship a deity named Saijong, the provider of prosperity, strength and nature's rewards. The main festivals are celebrated during the months of October or November. Traditionally, the local priest chants mantras before cultivation for well-being, success of harvests. Bani mari rang no, bani ki patang no, the Mangala of Asanang. The 100 drum festival of Asanang is a major event held either during October or November. Thousands of people, ranging from youngsters to adults, gather for the occasion. The boys play a drum that is long in size called the dhamma and also play flutes made out of bamboos. The occasion is accompanied by girls who dance along the folk tunes and drum beats. They all dance in a circular pattern, attired in colourful ethnic costumes. 
Garo folklore basically revolves around the romanticized elements of nature, livelihood struggles, love, tragedy, human desire, so on and so forth. A special folk song called Ajia is also sung during this wondrous festival. In the Wangala festival, they offer their worship and appreciation to the creator and organize a feast for the entire community. However, as time progresses ahead, the conventional practices of the community, their original heritage, folklore, seems to be diminishing. Scholars and various other intellectuals, including tribesmen, are taking benevolent steps to preserve such an enriched culture. Traditional festivals are preserving cultures that are slowly diminishing. Certain indigenous groups of the Garo community practice the Tatara Puja. It is done for the welfare of a child and family. The Puja is quite similar to Shiva Puja and it involves the worshipping or offering of homage to the creator for familial prosperity and undisputed bliss. is one of the few matrilineal societies in the entire world. 
titles are inherited from the mother and the daughter receives land or property as generations pass. The son usually leaves his parents' home and trains themselves at Nook Pantis, which is a bachelor's village dormitory. The boy returns to his wife's home after marrying. However, the tribe is not matriarchal. In other words, even if the women inherit property, the male members are responsible for governing and managing the society, as well as domestic issues. Children, regardless of gender, are all given equal rights and importance by parents, and the boys ensure safety and protection to women. One can come across glimpses of their traditional practices among the Garos in Tripura, such as the erection of wooden pillars for every dead person. These pillars are called Kema. Similarly, chubok, rice beer is prepared for special occasions and to offer as homage to the gods even now. Moms would sing lullabies to their children before they sleep. And the unity among tribesmen is also very rigid. Village doctors use traditional means like using herbs and spiritual apparatus to heal ailments and diseases. If a boy and girl elopes, the respective village council holds a meeting for the formal recognition of the former as a couple. The Garo cultural heritage is very diverse. They are known for their wide expanse of handcrafted ornaments, weapons and distinctive architectural styles that befits purposes of the community. There's a traditional dress of the tribe named Dakamanda. It looks fabulous when adorned with their colorful handcrafted ornaments. The community enjoys adorning themselves with rings, bangles, necklaces, waistbands, pendants and many more. Every ornament has its specific name and is worn in distinctive styles as well. For instance, the natapsi is a string of beads that is worn in the upper ear part. Nadirong is a brass ring which is also worn at the upper ear part. Jaksil is an elbow ring worn by wealthy men on certain ceremonies, so on and so forth. Certain ornaments are markers of status and dignity as well. Along with the distinction in ornaments, the community also has its own fine share of arms and weapons. They have a special sword called the Milam, which is a dual-edged sword carved out of one single piece of iron. 
Other weapons include axe, spears, daggers, shield, bow and arrow. Generally, rice is the staple food of the tribe. Traditionally, they are well acquainted with the apparatus of boiling paddy for preparing boiled rice. Apart from the rich constitution of vegetables they are able to retrieve from the forests and jam fields, meat is also preferred among the community. One of their finest delicacies that are actually popular in the entire northeastern part is the bamboo shoot curry. Liquor is also an important part of the community, some of which are traditionally prepared with a natural apparatus for special occasions. For example, the Garus prepare a traditional rice beer named chubok. Fishing is also a part of their daily lives. The practice of fishing, both for domestic purposes and trading in the nearby marketplaces, is widespread. Pineapple farming is also one of their widespread cultivation practices. Animals and poultry are also reared in their farms. This includes pigs, cattle, chicken, duck, etc. Tripura is the second largest rubber producer in India after Kerala with 72,000 hectares of land under plantation producing 40,000 tons of rubber annually. Tripura's annual turnover from rubber cultivation is about 480 crores. The Garo community of Tripura plays a significant role in rubber plantation and processing.
Lots of Garu people work in rubber farming and processing units. Garo houses are basically constructed from whatever is available in the forest or hills in complete abundance. Such materials include bamboo, cane and timber. Garo architecture has certain classifications which are as follows. Jam siring. Jam siring is the small number of huts constructed in orchards and rice fields. Seasonal produce such as fruits are stored in these huts. Nokmong. It is the completely equipped home where all the members of a family can reside in. The house is constructed with every basic necessity required in a home. This includes kitchens, bedrooms, fermenting rooms, water storage sections and an elevated platform that serves the purposes of storing firewood, fowl and so on. Jamodai. It is also referred to as the field house and is constructed in the Cham harvest lands. Often, from safety against wild animals, such small houses are constructed on treetops. It is believed that Garu literature was passed on from early generations to the latter ones orally. This oral tradition of literature is one aspect that sets the Garu literature apart from other forms of literature. Likewise, stories, folklore and tales of heroes were shared by the elders to younger ones during their special moments or perhaps sitting around bonfires. The Garus are certainly one of the world's most distinct communities. They have brilliantly sustained their culture and traditions in remarkable ways. The tourism industry now welcomes the world to showcase their beautiful lifestyle, their enriched histories, stories about bravery, romanticism on nature, and not to forget all the beautiful festivals that gratifies nature for whatever it has provided. By profession, before the advent of modernization, the Garus were traditional cultivators of Jum. They have done the same for over 4,000 years. Other professions include hunting and attaining the status of warrior, Matgrik. Livelihood has taken a drastic change now and Garus have also adopted the modern way of life, going for higher education, searching for jobs, so on and so forth. 